have your Bibles this morning, we'd like to ask you to please turn to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. We'd like to begin reading with the first verse. We'll read through uh, verse 9. Psalm 37, verses 1 through 9. The first verse in Psalm 37 says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. I don't know of anything more needful for us to hear today than that expression in the beginning of that verse where it says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. There will always be evildoers in the world. There are times that evildoers, those that hate God and they despise the word of God and the truth of God, there will be times that they will be around all of us, and yet there are occasions where we seem to be plagued even more with evildoers than ever before. That seems to be the condition in our nation right now. And yet the Word of God tells us that we're not to fret because of evildoers. Fret's not a word that we typically use. The word fret means to be very angry, to be displeased, to be incensed, and to worry about. Don't worry about those evildoers. Don't fret. Don't be incensed. Don't let them rob you of the peace that you're supposed to have. Don't let them cause you to be troubled in your soul. The Word of God tells us that we're to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. That verse is going to mean more, mean more to you in the next few months than ever before. To trust in the Lord. No matter what it looks like, no matter what is going on, no matter what is happening, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Don't care what they do, don't let them cause you to be incensed or enraged or very angry. Don't let them cause you to worry. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. When I fret because of evildoers, it's because I am not trusting in God. That's the bottom line. Everything else in the rest of this chapter is primarily talking about the fact that we are to trust in the Lord. And when we do trust in the Lord, when we exercise the faith that God has given us, then we will not fret because of evildoers. He says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Then he, he, he names several things in the next several verses that we're to do. In verse 3 he says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Trust in the Lord and do good. That's the command. That's the exhortation that God is giving to us. Trust in the Lord and do good. Be busy about your father's business. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So he says, trust in the Lord in verse 3. Delight thyself in the Lord in verse 4. Verse 5 says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So commit your way unto the Lord. Don't worry about the future. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Trust in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. And commit thy way unto the Lord. Verse 6, and he, shall, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Then he says in verse 7, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So he begins this chapter by saying, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. And then in verse 8 he says, verse 7 he says, Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. Now what does the word fret mean? 
What's one of the meanings of the word fret? To be very angry. So he says in verse 8, he says cease from anger. Same thing as fret not. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. You know, sometimes when you are angry, sometimes when you're fretting because of evildoers, the devil's going to tempt you then to do something that's evil. And so God says here, fret not yourself because of evildoers and don't do any evil. Verse 9 says, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. So the important most important thing for us to, to understand today is, number one, we're not to be fretting because of evildoers. We're not to be worrying because of evildoers. It does not matter who's in authority over us. We're not to let those people that are evil, we're not to let them cause us to worry or be angry or fret. We're to trust in the Lord. We're to delight in the Lord. We're to commit our way unto the Lord. Everything God tells us to do here is the opposite of fretting and worrying and being angry. So I pray that God will help us today to understand if you're fretting, if you're angry, you're doing exactly what God says don't do. Don't worry about all those evildoers. Don't be thinking about those evildoers. Where God tells us, let not your heart be what? Let not your heart be troubled. If you're fretting because of evildoers, your heart is troubled. Turn in your Bibles to John 14 because that whole passage of Scripture is when Jesus was about to leave the earth and there were going to be many evildoers that the apostles were going to face. In fact, all of the apostles were eventually going to be killed and put to death and yet Jesus taught his apostles, don't worry about it. He taught his apostles in the very beginning in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, don't worry about your food, clothing, and shelter. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And then when he begins to leave this earth in John chapter 14, he says in verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. That word believe means to have faith. Have faith in God. Trust in the Lord. Believe in God. Jesus says, let not your heart... If you believe in God, Jesus says, believe also in me. Trust God the Father, trust God the Son, and God will give you the Holy Spirit. When you're trusting in God, when you're depending on God, when you're waiting on the Lord, when you're committing your way unto the Lord, God's going to give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is also in the same chapter of the Bible is called the Comforter. And if you want to feel the presence of the Comforter, then you're going to have to stop fretting because of evildoers. You're going to have to stop letting those things and the events of our day, stop letting those worry you. Trust in the Lord. Believe in God. Believe also in Jesus Christ. Come down to verse 26 and 27. We're still in John 14 verses 20. Well, let me stop in verse 23. John 14, after he's been talking about having faith in God, then in John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. You know what your number one obligation, duty, and responsibility is? It's to keep the word of God. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. And do what God tells you to do. If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Then in verse 26 he says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. What does Jesus leave with his apostles who were about to face bigger trials than any of us have ever faced in our lives? I want you to remember those apostles they were living on very, under very ungodly spiritual leaders and they were living under very ungodly government leaders. And yet they were taught repeatedly, trust in the Lord. Don't be looking at those evildoers. Don't be fretting yourself because of those evildoers. 
God is telling his apostles here as they are going to be facing death. He says, let not your heart be troubled. And then he says in verse 27, peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So God is repeatedly saying, don't let your heart be troubled. Same thing as what Psalm 37, 1 say. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Let not your heart be troubled. And the only way that you can keep from your heart being troubled is, number one, don't be paying a lot of attention to those evildoers. Number two, trust in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. Commit thy way into the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Read the word of God. Obey God. And walk with him every day. Your eyes should be focused on Jesus Christ, not on the things of this world. When you focus on the things of this world, your heart is going to be troubled. You're going to displease God as his children when you're, when you're troubled about the events and the circumstances in life. I remember one of the old preachers said one time, he said that when people asked him, or when he asked somebody how they were doing, they would say, pretty good under the circumstances. He says, shame on you. You ought not to be under the circumstances. You ought to be on top of the circumstances. Doesn't matter what the circumstances and conditions of life are, we're to be dependent upon God and trusting in God. Doesn't matter what's happening all around us, we can have peace in our soul. God will give peace. He's promised that he will give peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now go with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Brethren, I cannot stress enough for you to have faith in God. Trust in God. All through the Word of God. We could take every letter to every one of the churches in the Word of God. We could take every letter and in every epistle the Word of God is telling the church, don't be afraid, don't fret, don't worry, trust in the Lord. Have faith in God. In Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10, the Word of God says, finally my brethren, listen brethren, you know them by heart. Don't you know these words by heart? Can you name every part of the armor of God? Can you name every part of the armor of God? Surely you can. I'm not telling you something new. But it doesn't matter if you can memorize all of these verses. doesn't matter how much of the Word of God you can memorize and quote. If you don't put it into practice in your life, then you're wasting your time and you're deceiving yourself into thinking you're a Christian when you can quote Scripture, but you're not following the Word of God. When God tells you don't worry, you better not worry. When God tells you keep my commandments, you better be keeping His commandments. We don't keep our... We don't keep his commandments so we can be in heaven one day. I'll tell you, brethren, we're going to be in heaven not because we've kept his commandments. We're going to be in heaven one day because of what Jesus has done for us. But I'll tell you, my Jesus, my Lord, my Savior has taught me and taught you we're to follow him. We're to obey him. We're to keep his commandments. He says, if you love me, you will keep my words. You will keep my commandments. You will not worry. Anybody been worried in the past week? Anybody fretted in the past week? I, I just don't understand why somebody will intentionally spend your time looking at, reading about, listening to fake news. And even if it was true news, if it's bad news, you don't have any reason to be listening to it. I remember when I first moved here and we didn't have a television at all. And one of the members of the church said, what are you going to do if a tornado comes? What are you going to do if a hurricane comes? I said, you'll call me. You remember Sister Jane? That's right. She, I said, you'll call me. Sister Jane will call me. And she does. And I thank the Lord for that. Listen, if there's a tragedy coming, uh, if it's something I can do something about, let me know about it. Because I'm not listening to the news. But don't let your heart be troubled. If I listen to the news, I'll get discouraged and despondent. 
I will fret myself because of evildoers. I'll get angry. I'll get incensed. I've been in people's homes and the news was on and I would get angry just sitting there. God's not pleased when we're fretting and worrying and angry because of, of what? Because of evildoers. I think more people are looking at one particular, two particular, evil, three particular evildoers. Three quickly come to my mind. But, but more of God's children looking at those three evildoers than they are at Jesus Christ. And the more you look at those evildoers, the more incensed you're going to be. But if you'll turn your eyes upon Jesus and look unto Jesus Christ, the author and finish of your faith, you'll have peace in your soul. You'll stop fretting, you'll stop worrying. I belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. Those evildoers can put me to death. They can put me in prison. They can do what they want to. Are you better than Jesus Christ? Did they put him to death? Did they hate him? Did Jesus plainly tell us if we're going to be his disciple, the world's going to hate you? He told us that. He said, don't love your life so much that you're not willing to die for me. Be willing to die for Christ. Ephesians chapter 6. The Word of God is setting forth here the, the specific steps that we have to follow if we're going to not fret because of evildoers. Ephesians chapter 6 beginning in verse 10. The Word of God says finally, My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. If you depend on your own strength, if you think, well I'm strong enough, my faith is strong enough, if you think you're strong enough, you're mistaken. You need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Is the devil still around today? Are there evil spirits still around today? Can your body be inflicted with evil spirits? You will have evil spirits in your heart, mind, and soul if you're fretting because of evildoers. If you're not looking to Jesus, you're going to be troubled in your soul. You remember when King Saul would have an evil spirit to come upon him? Do you remember that? Well, evil spirits are still around today. Do you know what drove those evil spirits away when King Saul was troubled in his soul? It was David playing the harp. Listen, brethren, you sing and you worship God. You lift up your voice, you make a joyful noise to the Lord, and you'll drive the devil away. The devil cannot stand it. He cannot be in the presence of you letting your light shine. The word of God says, put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 13 says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Has the evil day come for us? Is the evil day here? And the only way you're going to stand is if you put on the whole armor of God. And come down now to verse 16. Verse 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. But then if you don't take the shield of faith, if you don't hold on to that shield of faith, if you don't use the shield of faith, the fiery darts of Satan will get into your heart and your mind and your soul and you will be fretting because of evildoers and after he finishes all this about putting on the whole armor of God he says in verse 18 he says praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints listen brethren you need to be praying for yourself but you need to be praying for others we need to be interceding in prayer for many of for all of God's people. Philippians chapter 4. If I could ask you to memorize one passage of scripture that I believe will help you more than anything else is Philippians chapter 4. I'd say the whole chapter. But there are at least 10 verses here that you need to look at and memorize. Look at Philippians chapter 4. First of all in verse 4 he says rejoice in the Lord always. In other words, rejoice in the Lord unless evildoers get in authority. No. Rejoice in the Lord unless you get put in prison. No. Rejoice in the Lord unless you're going to be stoned to death. No. Rejoice in the Lord always. And then he said, and, 
And then he said, and again, I say rejoice. Then in verse 6, he says, be careful for nothing. That means don't fret about anything. Don't worry about anything. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. You got a lot to be thankful for today? Amen. You got a lot to worry about today? Thank you, Brother David. Thank you, Brother David. I asked what was, uh, well, got a lot to be thankful for. He said, Amen. I said, You got anything to worry about? Nope. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Oh, but you don't understand. You haven't been listening. I don't care what the news says. I don't have anything to worry about. I belong to God. You belong to God. You're a child of God. You're one of His sheep. And, and the psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And he even comes on down in that psalm and says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I'll tell you, brethren, if you don't trust in the Lord, if you're fretting because of evildoers, your soul is going to be in turmoil and in a hell while you're still living here on this earth. We need to stop worrying about anything. So he says, don't worry about anything, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And what will happen then? Verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Listen, brethren, if your heart is not filled with the peace of God, if your heart and your mind is not filled with the peace of God, it's only because you haven't done what verse 6 says to do. If you'll do what verse 6 says here, verse 7 is a promise from God. You'll have the peace of God which passeth all understanding. And then he says, you, he tells you exactly what to think about in verse 8. How many of you have thought about the evil president-elect? He still may not go in office. I don't know what God's going to do. It doesn't matter. But it does matter. What God does is going to be right, okay? What God does is going to be right. It's going to be okay. What God allows, he has a purpose in everything that happens. He tells you what to think about in verse 8. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, you know, the Apostle Paul, how many of you like to hear a preacher say, in closing? How many of you like to hear me say, that? in closing, in closing? Did you know how many chapters are in the book of Philippians? How many chapters are there? Four chapters in the book of Philippians. Do you know what it says at the beginning of, right in the middle of it? At the beginning of chapter 3? So you got the first two chapters, then you got the last two chapters. In the beginning of chapter 3 he says, Finally my brethren, I can see them now. Well good, this is soon going to come to a close. He wasn't but halfway through. And then he says in, uh, in verse 8 he says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Is it possible for you to just think on those things? I believe it is. Is it possible for you to stop fretting? Is it, stop, is it possible for you to stop worrying? Verse 9 says, if you'll think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the, Lord, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now in verse 7, he says, the peace of God, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. In verse 9 he says, and the God of peace shall be with you. Brethren, I want the God of peace to be with me. I want God to dwell with me. I want the Lord to manifest himself to me. And then I won't worry. And so he says in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Can you stop fretting? Can you stop fretting? More importantly, will you stop fretting? You see... Uh, people are watching you. People are watching you. They're watching how you react to all this that's going on. And they're either seeing a Christian that has total faith in God, or there's, you know, Jesus makes this statement 
or rather the scripture makes this statement. It says, there are children in whom is no faith. Did you know that? No faith. And then he says, even to his apostles, he says, O ye of little faith. And then the word of God speaks about those that are full of faith. Full of faith. I want to be full of faith. I want to think on the things God would have me to think about. I don't want to fret another day. I don't want to have one fretful thought in my mind. Because if you're fretting, you're causing other babes in Christ to think they've got a reason to be all upset. They've got a reason to fret. But if you're a mature sheep and you're showing them there's no reason to be fretting and that you're trusting in the Lord and you're depending on God, then they'll have peace while you have peace. I remember as a child, one time, I was with a very, very, very good friend of mine. I was about 10, 12 years old, and a big storm came up. Lightning and thundering, and his mama was scared to death of lightning and thundering. And she got us in the living room and got us behind the sofa, just crouched down behind the sofa, just just petrified in fear screaming and crying and praying but there was little faith there and then I remember on another occasion being in someone's home and the lightning was striking and thunder was rolling and the mother in that home said don't be afraid God's in control now, everybody's watching you. Your children are watching you. Your grandchildren are watching you. Your friends are watching you. You want to fret because of evildoers? You're bringing shame and reproach on the cause of Christ. If you're worried, you're bringing shame and reproach on the cause of Christ. I can stop fretting. I can stop worrying. I can trust in the Lord. I can delight myself in the Lord. I can commit my way unto the Lord. And then he tells us in verse 19 of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4 verse 19. He says, but my God shall supply all your need. You believe that this morning? You believe God shall supply all your need? He will. He will. I pray that God will help us today to trust in the Lord. God is in control. God is in control. I don't care how many evildoers there are. God can bring it all to a naught. Or he can let them do some things that are very, very evil. But ultimately, I want you to remember, it's not up to you. Vengeance, listen carefully. People that want to kill children, unborn children. People that are taking strong stands against everything the Word of God says. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. May God help us all to trust in Him and stop fretting and stop, stop worrying and have total confidence in God is my prayer for Christ's sake.